everybody. Welcome to Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art. I'm Robin Craren, Collections Research Coordinator at the Barnes Foundation. Today I'm going to talk to you about this painting by Marie Sutrillo, a French painter. Um, and you see it here in uh, room 19 on the north wall. Uh, and it's actually flanked symmetrically on the other side by another painting by Utrillo. He, uh, we actually have 12 paintings in the collection. But today I'll just talk about this painting from of the uh, Montmartre, which is a neighborhood in Paris. So Maurice Utrillo was born in 1883 in Paris, in, this, in, in Montmartre, to Suzanne Valadon, who was a, also a French painter. Um, but she's also a model to artists like Renoir and Toulouse-Lautrec, among others. Utrillo did spend uh, a period of his youth outside of the city um, in the suburbs of Paris. Um, and there he uh, developed um, alcoholism at a pretty young age. And uh, he suffered from alcoholism and bouts of mental illness throughout his life um, and his first uh, institutionalism, institutionalization from this was actually uh, quite young, around 1821. He was encouraged, uh, apparently by his mother, to begin painting uh, during his rehabilitation. And it's something he kept up with throughout his life. He never did receive any formal training, but he was a very prolific painter um, and produced thousands of canvases, uh, many of which were of his probably favorite subject of Montmartre. Um, and this painting is one of them. So Montmartre uh, is a, an area which is a large hill uh, in the city of Paris. It's in the 18th arrondissement on the right bank of the River Seine. Um, like I said, it's a big hill, so it's one of the areas of Paris where uh, most of it is climbing up this kind of windy hill. Um, and this uh, scene is from the Place du Tertre, which is a lively square near the top of the hill. Um, and it's just a few streets away from the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur, uh, which is kind of the iconic, uh, the icon of, of Montmartre that we know today. Um, the area was actually only made part of the city of Paris in 1860. And before that, it was actually a really rustic area with farms and vineyards and um, lots of windmills. Um, but it, beginning in the 1870s, it really became this um, haven for artists and, and the like. Um, and it lasted until around the First World War, where they began moving to a different neighborhood in Paris called Montparnasse. Um, but at the time that um, Utrillo was painting this, most likely, it still was kind of that hub of nightlife and um, area for artists to gather. Uh, it's famous for being the uh, location of Le Moulin Rouge and Le Chat Noir, which were cabarets, and there were lots of cafes, lots of bistros, restaurants, and dance venues that um, made it, like I said, this major hub of nightlife. But that's not what it really looks like in this painting. Um, it feels actually quite empty. There's only about five figures, um, including this little policeman right here, or that's what I read it as, who's possibly take, uh, kind of guarding the square. And then these other four figures walking along the street, kind of almost in a line. The other thing that makes it feel kind of empty is that a lot of the windows of these buildings are shuttered. These are open, but a lot of these, up, if you look at the top windows, are all shuttered. So it makes it feel really like almost not lived in. Um, and even the uh, names of these of these shops and restaurants, um, you can make out restaurant. So he doesn't actually choose to um, say what the actual restaurant is. He just names it a restaurant. And then up here, if you can read it, it says hotel or hotel. But it's really hard to read out if he's actually uh, giving any name to that hotel. And then over here, it just says vin for wine. It's like a wine shop. And then this one even over here, it's rather hard to read. Maybe it says liquor, but it's kind of hard to tell. He did this often in a lot of his paintings. Um, he didn't assign uh, actual names to them, which kind of makes it hard to figure out where exactly they're located. So how do we know that this one is the Place du Théâtre? 
Well, it actually has a couple clues that make it a little bit more obvious. So this big domed steeple up here, this white domed steeple, it's actually uh, part of the Basilica of Sacré-Cœur, which I mentioned before. It was built in 1875 uh, and finished around 1914. Um, was not consecrated until a few years later because of the First World War. Um, but it became, like I said, was this icon of the area around this time. Uh, and it's pretty recognizable. Um, this <clears throat> right here, you can also see kind of like an outline of, a, of another building, and it's right in front of this kind of blue, bluish green roof. And that's actually um, one of the oldest churches in Paris, which is almost exactly next to the to, next to Sacré-Cœur, and that's the um, Église Saint-Pierre de Montmartre. It's about 800, 900 years old. Um, the area of Montmartre is actually was settled hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, even going back to the like Gallo-Roman time times, <clears throat> which makes sense. It was this uh, hill, so it could be used as a military stronghold, but um, it actually had an abbey and uh, church-related buildings on it for a long period of time, like this church, which, like I said, is almost 800 or 900 years old. So why do you think why do we think that this painting is so empty? Um, one reason could be that Utrillo is trying to kind of bring back uh, these pictures, bring us back to a time period before it was so uh, commercialized or um, teeming with people to a time period that's a little bit more rustic and nostalgic. But another kind of more obvious answer is that this could just be an early morning you know, the sky, the bluish, uh, partly cloudy sky does brighten the image, but it does feel, especially with the um, shutters closed, like it could be an early morning before anything's really happening. Um, Utrillo did paint from life, but he also is known to have painted um, from postcards, something which he was uh, strongly criticized for. Um, Postcards were becoming very popular during this time period. Uh, from the late 19th into the early 20th century, uh, they became very popular for a quick and easy way of communicating. And they often had um, photographs of iconic places like the Place du Tertre or the Basilica Sacré-Cœur or other areas or landmarks within the city of Paris. They may have been used by locals to communicate with their friends or family or um, also as souvenirs. Uh, for people during their travels. So it was a little bit more of an easy communication than a letter. It was quick um, and it served as kind of a souvenir as an image of where they were. Where they were. Um, but like I said, he was criticized for using these as reference. But I think that we can look at them in a little bit different of a way. Even if this scene is from life, not from a postcard, uh, his paintings of Montmartre are very like are very nostalgic. Um, like I said, they're often stripped of their figures and of the commercialization of the area um, in favor of, of something that almost memorializes um, these relics of, of the area um, in which he was born and spent most of his life. Um, and it brings it back to this quieter time, um, a quieter time before before all these people were we're living in the area and uh, making it this noisy, teeming place uh, back to a more rustic time. So that's it for today's uh, takeout. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel to get your daily servings of art, you can also leave a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Collins, Newbauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.